Happy Public Service Day to everybody. My name is Marlon Nassis. I'm the Director for Public Sector Modernization. And I'm here to present to you on the topic, Embracing Digital Government Post-Pandemic. Very important topic that I'm hoping that I could share and enlighten you on as we move into the next phase as a country um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So Digital Government Post-Pandemic is about a sustainable digital transformation strategy that provides and drives and Lucia's public sector to harness and use technology to guarantee public, equitable public access for all, build internal efficiencies within the operations of government, increase productivity while ensuring there is transparency, security, and accountability for all, increase in knowledge and information sharing, improve programs and services to create better outcomes for all our citizens. This has to be key as we move post pandemic. We must provide an, an incubating environment for new and innovative business, for youth empowerment, for greater investment and prioritization of technology by the government, with the modernization of traditional industries and creation of jobs in the traditional and non-traditional sectors. I think these, these things would definitely allow us to really boost and generate more capacity and more value within the digital economy. So digital transformation post pandemic, who is it for? What do we do and how do we do it? We need to focus on our citizens and residents and visitors, on our businesses and our investors, on our public servants and government must provide this decentralized access to all of its services. We must focus on the what, it must be user-friendly. Our systems must be inclusive and we must provide persons with the option to pay online so that um, doing business with government remains inclusive and remains convenient. How do we do this for our civil servants? We must ensure that we transform the public service through digital governance, through proper accounting and accountability, through data sharing and capacity building, because we know that the introduction of technology would obviously need for, have created the need for us to build more capacity, train, retrain, and reskill and retool our citizens, our civil servants. For our business sector, we must be consistent and we must make this technology applicable for their needs. There must be collaboration with the private sector. PPP, we must explore private sector innovation and know-how. Government must also decentralize its services. So at the same time that we consolidate and have um, shared services and a shared services platform, we must look to develop service bureaus. The system must be mobile responsible and there must be equity of access for all. And that is in keeping with our, our um, concept and our policy of digital inclusion, where we don't leave anybody behind, but create opportunities and that value that I spoke of earlier so that everyone can participate in the digital economy. How do we do this? For our citizens, residents and visitors, we must strengthen citizen contact. There must be proper cybersecurity policies and regulations to protect persons' identity on the platform. For our citizens, for our civil servants, we must show that there is actionable data that can be used and reused to simplify the work process. And as I said earlier, government must decentralize its offices, its, its, its services. Government must have a 24 seven um, access for all persons um, accessing government services. And, and at the end of the day, there must be a reduction in the total cost of owning technology for government to really harness and embrace the power of digital transformation. So Karen Mosburger once said that a digital citizen are those who use the internet regularly and effectively. And that focuses on several key areas. One, equity of access, because everyone must be able to access the technology as we move towards, as we move along the digital transformation agenda. We must encourage this concept of e-participation, e-democracy, where persons see government not only as a place where they go to access services, but they see themselves as a partner with government in the whole governance of the country. Did data only once, again, speaking to 
the, 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 the removal of these redundancies and silos that currently exist with government. Post-pandemic, we must adopt this concept of data only once, where we securely connect and exchange data between systems, between agencies, through the shared services platform that I will speak about later on. And we cannot get any of these things done if there is no digital identity. And again, with this um, digital transformation agenda that we're on, a major focus of this is the establishment of government's digital transformation um, national authentication framework. Again, focusing on how do we create that value, create opportunity for the citizens, for our citizens as we um, develop our systems going forward. Digital transformation post pandemic. What is government's role specifically to our, our youth, providing equity and opportunity, ensuring there is business innovation and identity management that must create equity, there must be opportunity and value for everybody, right? Our youth must be empowered. We must provide new job opportunities so that persons can really embrace technology to change their lives and to to, to, to build value in this new economic ecosystem that we speak about. Equity and opportunity, looking at meaningful connectivity. You know, what is the broadband? How does broadband focus in this digital transformation agenda? It must be meaningful so that persons can really embrace these opportunities through cutting edge technology. Business innovation, creation of new entrepreneurial um, opportunities for our people. Integration of agencies to promote data sharing, a single point of entry, business innovation. Um, again, that, that also leans on the private sector. So government sees itself as this catalyst to really drive innovation through one of our major digital transformation um, projects, which I will speak of in a bit. And as I spoke of earlier, identity management, which is so key and so critical to be able to identify your citizens, identify businesses, as we move down this digital path. We've already started on this trade, on this, this, um, this journey. It's called the Senusha Digital Development Framework. And this framework focuses on four or five major areas. One focuses on the environmental forces. Who are our stakeholders? The stakeholder demands dictate what government's policy and government's policy must fit with, with those demands, right? We must understand the economic environment you know what is you know right now we've seen so much pressure internationally on oil prices on food etc how does government then use technology to help address these specific challenges and all of and our digital transformation agenda must fit within the national development strategy that midterm development strategy that the government is pushing forward at this moment our policy pillars and accelerators focus on digital policy and regulation, governance and funding, which is key to the success of our digital transformation post-pandemic. Digital trust is also a very, very important and the security of the platform of these digital technologies that government is pushing forward. Persons must be able to trust government. Um, our digital community, we see digital transformation starting at the grassroots level. And this is why there is so much of this heavy focus on youth empowerment as we really design that digital transformation agenda so we can move forward. So we move to DigiGov. What is DigiGov? Digital transformation post pandemic is a technology driven shift from limited business hours, long queues, long processing times, to reduce processing times, to secure transactions, right? Internal government efficiency of operations, data sharing, data only once, 24 access. This is that paradigm shift that we seek with digital transformation. And we think through our flagship project, DigiGov, we are able, and we will be able to, to create that value for our citizens. DigiGov is a one-stop shop to government public services where online transactions can be conducted with government in an inclusive, equitable, and secure manner, right? It will aggregate 154 services, over seven ministries and 13 agencies, provide a robust platform that conforms to international standards and supports end-to-end -end services. 
right, to streamline and integrate business processes to create that public value that I spoke of. And we will do that based on a national authentication framework, which will identify all users of the platform. Again, <clears throat> digital government is about adding value through mobile app development, providing identity as a service, having this connected data so that we could, we could really use the information for data mining, for decision-making. Job creation, again, how do we see this catalyst providing this platform to facilitate the development of, or the creation of new jobs? You know, jobs like <clears throat> um, database development, mobile app development, security analysts, security um, officers within the platform, service bureau agents. Um, there are several opportunities that we see coming out of the digital transformation and specifically the digital platform. So <clears throat> this is key. And you'll notice here that we, we're looking at some of the other niche areas like cybersecurity, um, equity of access, data mining, data only ones, industry. How could we then formulate this industry? And through our um, um, St. Lucia Digital Strategy, you notice that there are key uh, sectors that are, are very vital towards this digital transformation agenda that we speak about. And also, what are some of the trends in digital transformation? Artificial intelligence, internet of things, blockchain and security, social media. We do a lot of social listening um, for, on our digital social media platform. And that is key because it creates this this um, uh, is based on this idea rather of, of digital participation. And we really need the feedback from our stakeholders to ensure that we're providing them with what they actually need for their daily lives. Um, payment platforms, big data, these are all critical to the success of digital transformation post pandemic. And then we want to lean on two major sectors, on the education sector and on the private sector. You know, we must ensure that our teaching and, and techniques are in keeping with our digital te technology trends as we move forward on this agenda. That the curriculum speaks to the demands of the day. That we can retool and reskill and redeploy our persons, our, in our, our youth as they move along this digital transformation path. On the private sector end, we must be working with government. We must seek to work with the private sector to build partnerships and relationships Right, looking at providing opportunities for our incubators for training and internships, um, providing those persons with access to, in, to, to infrastructure and access to devices and technology that they can use to really build and hone their skills, um, data management, blockchain, and cybersecurity. We see these as opportunities that we can work with the private sector to really start building on the digital economy that we speak about. So, I will say now that. We need to also support this digital transformation with legislative reform. Some of the key aspects that we are focusing now focuses on the public sector sharing bill, the electronic transactions amendment bill, and the digital government bill. And these bills are going to be pushed, or I should say, will be forwarded to um, our AG and, our, and the, the cabinet soon for approval so that we can then move to the next stage of public sector consultation and public consultations so that we can get feedback from our key stakeholders as we try to really begin this digital transformation, legislative reform um, to support digital transformation. And lastly, I must say that to embrace digital government post-pandemic, it has to be all-inclusive, it has to be sustainable, it has to be equitable, and we must all embrace our responsibility as we move on this digital transformation agenda. Thank you very much.